Let us for a few minutes meditate upon the Divine Master and his teaching. Hari Om Tatsa Om Sthapakaya Chadharmasya Sarvadharmaswarupine Avatar Varishtaya Rama Krishna Yate Nama Asato Masadgamaya Tamaso Majo Tevamaya Ratyor Let us offer our salutations to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the Supreme God incarnate. Let us pray to Him to lead us from unreal to the real, to dispel all ignorance and light the lamp of knowledge. Let us pray to Him to conquer death, to experience the highest reality. It's only when we experience that highest reality, we will be well established in most wonderful peace. Well, Sri Ramakrishna has pointed out why we are suffering, why we don't have peace. Even though God keeps on satisfying our desires, yet we will not have peace. Why? Without getting peace, what's the use of all this? A kind of uh, involvement in the things. What is the reason for all this? Sri Ramakrishna tells that because you are fascinated with the splendor, so you are having no peace. This whole creation is the manifestation of God's splendor. We are in it. We are totally participating in various types of activities in this world. As long as we are involving in the splendor, so long we will not have real peace. What Sri Ramakrishna wants to say is that don't get lost in this splendor. God alone is real. The splendor has but a two-day existence. Today is one thing, tomorrow is another. That's the way of the splendor. Again, Sri Ramakrishna tells the magician and his magic. People are so fascinated with the wonder about the magic, but it's all unreal. The magician alone is real. Again, he gives another example, rich man and his garden. When people go and see the garden, they are so much fascinated by the beauty of the garden. They should look for its rich owner. So, Sri Ramakrishna points out, turn to God, the owner of the garden, the whole world is a garden of Sri Ramakrishna, God, Supreme God, whatever name you call. But how to see? Is there any way? 
again it has been pointed out the only way to see god experience the highest truth dispel all ignorance of unreality is religion religion shows the way to see god religion if you discard religion you are discarding peace you don't arrive at peace at all so religion has supreme importance in our life you have to learn to understand the principles of religion you have to come in contact with holy people and holy scriptures you must step into different way of practice to realize to experience what is everlasting it's only through religion you arrive at the highest truth that's the way to reach the light of knowledge that's very important suppose you see a fantastic building to a layman's perspective only the superstructure of the building is evident he is just wondering about the beauty of the building but an engineer who can mentally have a view from within is aware is intensely aware of the invisible foundations that support the beautiful imposing superstructure without foundation without that strong base how can you have such fantastic building likewise when you take the spiritual path when you are adapting religion when you really aspire for peace you must lay foundation whatever you want to achieve it should start with firm foundation tyag renunciation is the foundation of religions without renunciation it has no stable structure without foundation building is not safe it crumbles any moment so renunciation is the foundation of religions their ideals and realizations even more than of its outer forms but there's a point here how that idea of renunciation enters into the heart when does it enter when a person realizes the inadequacy of the external world as well as of the internal world consisting of body senses mind and ego the non religious aspirations awaken and grow but first step is you must be very definite about the inadequacy of these things of the external world and internal world both if that state has not come then you are ready to wait for a long long time to try for peace side by side 
with this dissatisfaction with temporal things will almost inevitably grow an attraction towards God, the imperishable truth. Therefore, Tyag always has a twofold character. Negatively, it is moving away from the impermanent. Positively, it is getting anchored into the permanent. Getting anchored in the permanent. So, religion, which totally concerns the permanent reality of God, demands tyag, renunciation as its foundation. When this is absent and yet a claim for religion or spirituality is advanced, we must conclude that like water in a mirage, spirituality is conspicuous by its semblance only, just a garb, hollow inside, totally hollow. Renunciation is the content of religion. Without that religion, has no meaning. You may say, I am I'm this, I am that. You may have hundred thousand interfaith dialogues every day. It leads nowhere. How many interfaith conferences are going on all over the world? By this time you should have got heaven and earth. But not a bit of the world is changed. Because it depends upon your personal character, unless you are properly well established in spiritual culture, your peace is only a talk, just a talk. Anyway, better to talk than be silent, at least by talking have that satisfaction of peace. If that is your view, very good. But you remain where you are, with all your pains, with all your sufferings, with all your sorrows, with all your grievances, with all dirty stuff, you remain where you are. You must purge all the impurities from the heart, then only you have got the right to say, I should see God. Why I am not able to see God? Until the impurities are removed from the heart, how can you say that God is not coming, God is not showing grace, thee, that? No. So Sri Ramakrishna is a practical demonstration of the supreme value of renunciation. It is not that because you are in the world, you must never practice renunciation. Now, if you don't want to practice renunciation, be ready to enjoy peacelessness. Ready to enjoy peacelessness. Enjoy it. Tyaga, that is the Sanskrit term for renunciation. To the ordinary external view, appears as a joyless discipline. But to its earnest follower, it brings a rare type of joy, a non-sensuous inner joy, the joy from the spiritual self. In common parlance, joy or happiness is always associated with contact, physical or mental. 
but all sensations and cognitions at their deeper levels being psychological happiness is always really an inner phenomenon again a more incisive problem will trace the source of all happiness to the innermost spiritual self in man the bliss of the self is imperfectly reflected by the ego mind senses sense objects and this reflected joy reflected joy is what the ordinary person desires and enjoys since tyaga by breaking down the reflectors takes a person straight to the spiritual source of all happiness the right type of tyag gives joy at all stages especially in the advanced stages so don't get stuck up with the splendor and forget the reality so there is a first point which shri ramakrishna has pointed out wherever you are in whatever position develop that quality of tyag renunciation the more you are heading on towards that the more and more peace you will enjoy real peace second point which shri ramakrishna has said he was telling somebody to bring some pictures a yogi like that he wanted to see them in fact i have seen in my own home in my pre monastic days there was a main hall at least about five six pictures photos were hanging on the walls what type of pictures not naked half naked uh, pictures of people no it's the pictures of gods and goddesses i still remember it's it's very nice to recollect now what i had seen before my father every day as soon as he woke up from his bed he would come to the hall and he would stand in front of the photos there was lakshmi saraswati other photos were there he would stand there one minute two minutes in front of those pictures then he would go to attend other activities whatever it is so what a fine tradition it is shri ramakrishna tells there's a point in that what is that first of all they are holy pictures that you must be very definite about what pictures you are keeping in your dwelling place holy pictures kindle spiritual consciousness as an imitation fruit awakens the idea of a real one so it's nice to have pictures holy pictures suppose you see a picture of a saint how peaceful and blissful as long as you keep on looking at that picture you yourself feel that immense peace inside so all these things are important without doing anything simply telling i didn't see god i didn't don't think that god is such a small thing to come and 
show up himself to you whenever you want all sorts of things no prepare yourself properly develop pronunciation take all steps required for it kindle that spiritual consciousness then you will enjoy the beauty of it so spiritual advancement is possible when the mind becomes pure and pure purity of the mind is very important factor in the spiritual field so shri ramakrishna tells pointedly don't be a worldly person what is the meaning of worldly person whose mind is always engaged in worldly activities to whom worldly activities are more important than whatever other things you may call spirituality god let me go and give one one pranam one salutation to god that's all. i don't have time to to practice he has got so much of time to do all sorts of things outside when it comes to the point of practicing spirituality he tells i don't have even a time to utter the name of god you don't know my state of mind as soon as i return home i feel so much exhausted tired i can't do anything simply lay down on the bed that's all what can be done as long as i live in this world i should behave that way otherwise who will take care of me so this kind of argument they want to put forth and convince themselves they are right all right if you think you are right go on with that view but shri ramakrishna tells very here very clearly unless you are guileless you can't come near god you can't come so he shri ramakrishna calls a worldly man a hypocrite why he professes to love god but he is attracted by worldly things he does not give god even a very small part of the love he feels for lust and gold but he says he loves god give up hypocrisy be guileless then only you can lay the firm foundation of spirituality then only the spiritual plant can grow so find out yourself think about all these ideas given by shri ramakrishna point by point and practice them with all sincerity that's why shri ramakrishna has said sincerity and guilelessness if you have you will achieve anything anyway this uh, just i have taken on two points from the last class page number 404 so shri ramakrishna is speaking about meditation there is another form of meditation known as the vishnu yoga the eyes are fixed on the tip of the nose half the look is directed toward inward and the other half outward this is how one meditates on god with form sometimes shiva meditates on god with form and dances at that time he exclaims rama rama and dances about shri ramakrishna then explained the sacred word om and the true knowledge of brahman and the state of mind after the attainment of brahma gyana master said the sound om is brahman the rishis and sages practiced austerity to realize that sound brahman after attaining perfection one hears the sound of this eternal word rising spontaneously from the navel what will you gain some sages ask by merely hearing this sound you hear the roar of the ocean from a distance 
By following the roar, you can reach the ocean. As long as there is a roar, there must also be the ocean. By following the trail of Om, you attain Brahman, of which the word is the symbol. The Brahman has been described by the Vedas as the ultimate goal. But such vision is not possible as long as you are conscious of your ego. A man realizes Brahman only when he feels neither I nor you, neither one nor many. Think of the sun and a ten jars filled with water. The sun is reflected in each jar. At first you see one real sun and ten reflected ones. If you break nine of the jars, there will remain only the real sun and one reflection. Each jar represents a jiva, individual being, embodied being. Following the reflection, one can find the real sun through the individual soul one can reach the Supreme Soul. Through spiritual discipline, the individual soul can get the vision of the Supreme Soul. What remains when the last jar is broken cannot be described. The jiva the embodied being, the individual, at first remains in a state of ignorance. He is not conscious of God, but of the multiplicity. He sees many things around him. On attaining knowledge, he becomes conscious that God dwells in all beings. Suppose a man has a thorn in the sole of his foot. He gets another thorn and takes out the first one. In other words, he removes the thorn of ajnana, ignorance, by means of the thorn of jnana, knowledge. But on attaining vijnana, he discards both thorns, knowledge and ignorance. Then he talks intimately with God day and night. It is no mere vision of God. He who has merely heard of milk is ignorant. He who has seen milk has knowledge. But he who has drunk milk and been strengthened by, by it has attained Vijnana. Thus the Master described his own state of mind to the devotees. He was indeed a Vijnani. Master said to the devotees, There is a difference between a sadhu endowed with Jnana and one endowed with Vijnana. The Jnani sadhu has a certain way of sitting. He twirls his moustache and asks the visitor, Well, sir, have you any question to ask? But the man who always sees God and talks to him intimately has an altogether different nature. He is sometimes like an inner thing, sometimes like a ghoul, sometimes like a child, and sometimes like a madman. When he is in samadhi, he becomes unconscious of the outer world and appears inert. 
He sees everything to be full of Brahman consciousness. Therefore, he behaves like a gaul. He is not conscious of the holy and the unholy. He does not observe any formal purity. To him, everything is Brahman. He is not aware of filth as such. Even rice and other cooked food after a few days becomes like filth. Again, he is like a madman. People notice his ways and actions and think of him as insane. Or sometimes he is like a child. No bondage, no shame, no hatred, no hesitation or the like. One reaches this state of mind after having the vision of God. When a boat passes by a magnetic hill, its screws and nails become loose and drop out. Lust, anger and the other passions cannot exist after the vision of God. Once a thunderbolt struck the Kali temple, I noticed that it flattened the points of the screws. It is no longer possible for the man who has seen God to beget children and perpetuate the creation. When a grain of paddy is sown, it grows into a plant, but a grain of boiled paddy does not germinate. He who has seen God retains his eye only in name. No evil can be done by that eye. It is a mere appearance, like the mark left on the coconut tree by its branch. The branch has fallen off, only the mark remains. I said to Keshav Sen, give up the ego that makes you feel I am the doer, I am teaching people. Keshav said to me, sir, when I cannot keep the organization, then I cannot keep the organization. Thereupon I said to him, Sri Ramakrishna said, Give up the wicked ego. One doesn't have to renounce the ego that makes one feel I am the servant of God. I am his devotee. One doesn't develop the divine ego as long as one retains the wicked ego. If a man is in charge of the storeroom, the master of the house doesn't feel responsible for it. To the devotees, Sri Ramakrishna said, You see, my nature is changing on account of this injury to my arm. It is being revealed to me that there is a greater manifestation of God in man than in other created beings. God is telling me, as it were, I dwell in men. Be merry with men. Among men, God manifests himself in a still greater degree in pure soul the devotees. That's why I feel great longing for Narendra, Rakal and other such youngsters. One often sees small holes along the edge of a lake. Fish and crabs accumulate there. Just so, there is a greater accumulation of divinity in man. It is said that man is greater than the Salik Gram. Man is Narayan himself. If God can manifest himself through an image, then why not through man also? God is born as man for the purpose of sporting as man. Rama, Krishna and Chaitanya are examples. By meditating on an incarnation of God, one meditates on God Himself. Bhagavan Das, a Brahma devotee, arrived. Master said to Bhagavan Das, The eternal religion, the religion of the Rishis, has been in existence from time out of mind and will exist eternally. There exist in this Sanatana Dharma all forms of worship, worship of God with form and worship of the impersonal deity as well. It contains all paths, the path of knowledge, the path of devotion, and so on. Other forms of religion, the modern cults, will remain for a few days and then disappear. Let us stop here. Now the participants' session starts now.
participants session he will take care of it uh, renunciation is different from uh, s- surrendering you see a person creates a problem and then telling god i am surrendering to you you take care of the problem how can it happen surrender means whatever that happens you are not bothered about it your faith in god is not shaken whatever that comes in whatever way is considered by you as a when you have to pass through valleys but those difficulties you enjoy them because you are you know you are climbing the mountain so here surrendering becomes fruitful when you uh live a life of purity and character suppose a man indulges in all sorts of uh, wrong things doing all sorts of crimes but telling i am surrendering to god it won't work so you have to prepare the position pray to god i am with your remembering remembering you i am carrying on this work please protect me all the time i am yours i have surrendered everything to you i don't aspire for anything else in that spirit if you carry on the things that means real surrendering but we should not think that by simply surrendering to god you will be getting away from difficulties getting away from problems no problems do exist whether you surrender or not but surrendering to god remains makes you peaceful amidst difficulties even though you are sitting on the fire you won't feel the heat of the fire because of his of your tremendous faith in god renunciation means renouncing the desires from the mind getting rid of attachment all sorts of attachment from the world withdrawing the mind from the splendors things of the world getting rid of worldliness is called renunciation not claiming anything on yourself giving up everything one by one all together from the mind emptying the mind em- emptying the mind from all types of tendencies all types of things is renunciation now the idea of renunciation <laughs> is there because of our involvement Ego. Yeah, sure. because of our attachment to yeah. things yeah sure. because the mind is full of uh, things mm-hmm. so yeah. the importance of renunciation yeah. comes sure. there yeah. if that is not there if you don't have that feeling at all then that question that question yeah. doesn't arise mm-hmm. but as long as you are in body and mind you as long as you are embodied as long as you are pulled down by the pulls of the mind as long as you are running here and there finding no time to utter the name of god finding no time to prayers that is the point so how you take the mind away from them and put it on god taking the mind away from such things is called renunciation so what is it that uh, drags us down into this peaceless state which sri ramakrishna many times in every page he has said it is lust and gold to put in short it has got many offsprings but the parents of all these uh, things are lust and gold so the more and more you are involving in those two things the more and more you are in a state of peacelessness this the idea so how to conduct yourself in this world living in the world at the same time not to be tainted by the worldliness that is possible only when you come in contact with saints sages incarnations their life and teachings that's the way do even do you may have all, all those things that you are even do you may have all the things around you if you are not affected by them that's the beauty of it your mind should be given to god the prominent place must be given to god than the 
other things. That's all. If you have all the possessions with you, but don't have the attitude of uh, possessing those things, feel as if they, they all belong to him and it is his, not me. With that feeling, you will be able to maintain that uh, mental poise. Otherwise, every now and then we get worried. Oh, something is coming, something is going, and mind is just disturbed by things around you. If your mind is not disturbed, then you are reaching a state of non-attachment. As soon as the mind gets attached to that text in mind energy is lost. Lot of uh, mind power is consumed by attachment. Lot of mental power, mental energy is consumed by attachment. If you, if you find joy in uh, meditating on God, in thinking about Him, if the mind is uh, peaceful to be with God, that's the meaning of purity. That's the indication of purity. See, when a person has that experience of the vision of God, his whole heart becomes full of love and compassion. And he is able to see the presence of God in everything. So, he tries to share his peace and joy with all the people whoever come to him or whomsoever he meets them. That peace is communicated. One gets immense joy, one gets immense peace. Mind gets, mind calms down in the presence of such a man whose heart is pure. You would like to go again and again and be in the holy company because you feel that what a joy it is. It is so nice to go and to be there. So that is because of, that is the power of the purity, power of the place. He is affected, no doubt. Anything that affects the mind must be removed. You must take steps to get rid of that kind of obstruction. But sometimes it is inevitable, as you said, you are going in a bus or you're going in a walking in the street, the atmosphere is like that, what's to be done? In that case, make your mind strong. Let your spiritual ideas be more strong, strongly implanted in your heart. Now I should not be carried away by these things. They are all just uh, glamorous. So even though uh, you are walking in the street and you are moving with the people, it is possible by practice not to be associated with such people and inwardly you may be thinking of the spiritual ideal and uh, not to lose yourself. That is, as soon as you come back from, back from the office to the home, engage yourself devotedly in uh, uh, spiritual practices and by, by that process you will be cleansing whatever the dirt has come, the dirt washes away. It won't, it has no time to create any impression. Suppose you don't wash it for a day or two, it remains there, it becomes hardened. And that means it creates some scars. That means if you are not practicing any spiritual sadhanas, every day what you accumulate the dirt and dust or whatever the impressions you gather by your contact with the worldly things, they remain in your mind. They keep on remaining and they keep on accumulating to the point they may cause disturbance. Suppose my hand is uh, having some stains. Immediately if I apply detergent, it, it goes away. Suppose you don't do it after half an hour if you do. It takes you hard time. It takes you very, it's very difficult for you to uh, remove that stain. The more the time you allow, the more difficult it is to get rid of it. In the same way, the worldliness also. That's why in our prayers, it's always said, Yadanhat kurute papam tadanhat pratimuchyade 
ಯದ್ರಾತ್ರಿಯಾತ್ ಕುರುತೇ ಪಾಪಂ ತದ್ರಾತ್ರಿಯಾತ್ ಪ್ರಮುಚ್ಯತೆ ದಿಸ್ ಎ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡೇ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಆಫರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಸುನ್ ಎಸ್ ಯು ಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಯುವರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಸಿಟ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಯು ಪ್ರೇ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಹಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ಲಿ ಓಲ್ ಆರ್ಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಮೆಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಮಿಟೆಡ್ ನೋಯಿಂಗ್ಲಿ ಆರ್ ಅನ್ ನೋಯಿಂಗ್ಲಿ ಲೆಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಬಿ ವಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅವೆ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಅಪೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಯು ಪ್ರೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಯು ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ವಾಶ್ ಅವೆ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಡೂ ಇಟ್ ಆನೆಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆಫರ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದಿ ದಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಮೆಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಇನ್ ದಿ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡೇ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಮ್ ಬಟ್ ದೇ ದೇ ಆರ್ ವಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅವೆ ದೇ ವಾಂಟ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಟು ಕಾಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟರ್ಬೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದೆಮ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿವೋಷನಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸಸ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಕೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ದೋಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫೈನಲ್ ಅನಾಲಿಸಿಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ರಿಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಆನ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಆಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಡಿವೋಟ್ ಮೈ ಟೈಮ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಫೈವ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಗಾಡ್ ದಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಯು ದಿ ರಿಯಲ್ ಪೀಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಯು ರಿಯಲಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಸಾಲ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಫೀಬಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಲುಕ್ ವಾರಮ್ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣನ್ ಟೆಲ್ಸ್ ರೆನೌನ್ಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸ್ಲೋಲಿ ಸಿ ಸ್ಲೋಲಿ ಸ್ಲೋಲಿ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಟರ್ನ್ ದಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಟರ್ನ್ ದಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇನ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ರಿಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ದಿ ಹೋಲ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಔಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೋಟಲಿ ರಿನೌನ್ಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಪ್ರಿಪೇರ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವೈ ಶುಡ್ ಯು ಹೈ ಹಂಗ್ ವೈ ಶುಡ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ದೀಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಟ್ರೈನಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಸಿಪ್ಲಿನ್ ದೆನ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಂಕ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ರಿನೌನ್ಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನಲಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೃಹಸ್ಥಾಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಕನ್ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅಲೋಡ್ ಟು ಸೊ ಟು ಸೇ ಎ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಕಾಂಟ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಲೀಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಗೃಹಸ್ಥಾಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಲೀಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಗೃಹಸ್ಥಾಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಗೃಹಸ್ಥಾಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಡಿಸಿಪ್ಲಿನ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆಲ್ ರೈಟ್ ಯು ಕಾಂಟ್ ಟೋಟಲಿ ರಿನೌನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಡಿಸೈರ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ರೈಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಿ ಡಿಸೈರ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ದಿ ಮೇ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ಡ್ ವೇ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಈಸಿ ಎನಿ ಎನಿ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಸಿಪ್ಲಿನ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಪರ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ದಿ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮಂಕ್ಸ್ ಈವನ್ ದೋಸ್ ಕನ್ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ರಿಮೂವ್ಡ್ ಇವನ್ ಸಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಗಾಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಟ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಹಿ ಟಾಕ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಟಿಂಜೆಂಟ್ ರೂಲ್ಸ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಮಂಕ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟ್ರೂ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಫಾಲೋ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ವಾಟ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೆಡ್ ಯು ಮಸ್ಟ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಗೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡೌಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್
spiritual accident because you are practicing nicely but on account of some factors you will have some fall accident but you have to recover that's the point all right we shall stop chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench your that mighty fallen fire worldly lust raging furiously within o name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thy self o self down deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar with every step Bathing in His name, that both for weary souls, various all Thy names, O Lord, in each and every name Thy power resides. No cry, no times are sad, no rites are needful for chanting of Thy name. So vast is Thy mercy, how huge then is Thy goodness, who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to Thy name. O my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass. Be patient and forbearing like a tree. Take no honor to thyself. Give honor to all. Chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O Lord and Soul of the Universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or rich renewal. The playthings of lust or the ties of fame. As many times as I may be reborn, grant me, O Lord, a steadfast love for thee. A drowning man in, the, in this world's fear of pollution is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy, conserve him as does beneath thy feet. O oh, how I long for the day when in stand separation from thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns away with his desire, and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence, though it tears my soul asunder. O thou, who stillest the hearts of thy devotees, do with me what thou wilt, what thou art my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from the darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good, may all be actuated by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous, may the virtuous attain tranquility, may the tranquil be free from bonds, may the freed make others free. May good be done all people, may the sovereign righteously rule the earth, may all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy, may the clouds pour rain in time, may the earth be blessed with crops, may all countries be free from calamity, may the holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied. <laughs>